Today I'm going to be discussing the types of tongs that I keep on hand and readily available all the time in the shop. I have a lot of tongs but this is my basic toolkit and it covers all the stock sizes and the kinds of work that I'm doing right now. I don't have room to store all of my tongs inside the shop so if I have a pair of tongs that are for a stock size that I don't need anymore or if I have multiples of the same pair and I don't need that because I'm working alone most of the time I store them in another area and when I need them I do have to go get them. It's kind of an ongoing process. I have room to store a half dozen or so tongs actually on the forge and the rest go on the rack so if I find that I'm rarely going to the rack for any pair of tongs and I'm just using what's on the forge then those are obviously my most important pairs of tongs and I sort of reevaluate the tongs that I have on the rack and whether I can use the space for something else and similarly if I need a pair of tongs and I have to go out and get it from the storage area uh, you know then if it winds up on the forge it's probably should stay in the shop but if it winds up on the rack it sits there forever then it probably should go back in storage so you're always kind of jumbling things around depending on the work that you're doing and every once in a while you start realizing that you have way too many tongs around and again the ones that you're using all the time are sitting on the forge and you're never going to the rack so you have to clean the rack off and start the whole process over again and this applies to a larger shop as well. Space around the forge is always at a premium, so you want to keep all the tools there that you use all the time, and the other stuff can go on a rack somewhere else in the shop that's less accessible. Now the first thing you have to realize about tongs is that as the stock sizes get larger and the hammers get heavier, the tongs have to get larger in order to be able to hang onto the piece and stabilize the work as you're doing the hammering. As an example, these two flat bit tongs are set up for whatever reason to hold the same stock size. So even though these two pairs of tongs are set up for the same stock size, it should be obvious that the larger pair is going to provide you with much better gripping strength and control over that piece. I would use the lighter pair of tongs simply to handle the piece, take it in and out of the fire or to move it around in the fire. I certainly wouldn't use them to do any heavy forging. So even though you do find light duty tongs that are designed to hold fairly heavy pieces of work, that doesn't mean they're forging tongs. There are a lot of applications where it is nice to have lighter tongs simply to handle the piece. So these lighter tongs are great for all those odd jobs where you need to handle hot pieces of metal that may be of a larger cross section, but you're not actually forging them. And so the, the tongs aren't being placed under any kind of strain and you're at no risk of the piece flying out of the pair of tongs because you don't have a solid grip on the metal. Now I have to say I don't use flat bit tongs very often. I do have them around, they are handy, and I do use them on occasion for some things, but for the most part I prefer to use tongs that wrap around the piece and you know that provides the most stability uh, for forging. The only pair of flat bit tongs that I really use a lot are these narrow bit flat bit tongs that I forge. They're basically like the blacksmith version of a needle nose pair of pliers. They seem to fit into a lot of areas where I can't get any other tongs and they're great for just handling small pieces of work. These jaws are both square and flat but if I was working say on the inside of a socket of an arrowhead I would round the bottom jaw to fit the shape of that socket. Another simple variation of the flat bit pair of tongs is the box jaw tongs. In these tongs you've just taken one jaw, widened it out a little bit and curved up the edges to fit around a given stock size. Smaller box jaw tongs can be forged out of one piece. Larger tongs you will need to weld a separate piece to the front of the lower jaw. But again these are just simple flat bit tongs that have been modified slightly. While we're on the subject of box jaw tongs, this is another variation of that shape. In this example, I forged the top and the bottom jaw the same way that I forged the lower jaw of the first set of box jaw tongs that I showed you. Only in this example, I wrapped the piece right around the flat bar that I was setting this tong up for. And 
this is a very common shape that uh, knife makers use for forging out their knives because it provides a really, really firm grip on the metal. These are called hinge tongs and they're just a simple variation on the box jaw tong. The upper jaw is curved to reach around the hinge barrel. Here are a couple of pairs of tongs that I use for working with scrolls and again they're just a basic flat bit pair of tongs that have been modified. This is just a standard scroll tong design. They have curved jaws and very heavy handles and hinge joints so that they can apply a lot of torque to a piece. The longer handles allow me to work with two hands, which you often need to do with heavier scrolls. These are the only pair of tongs that I use that are made of spring steel. They don't need to be heat treated, but they do need to be made out of a tougher metal. This is just a general purpose pair of tongs that you can use to make fine adjustments on a scroll or to clamp down on a section that you don't want to distort while you're working on another section. And the tips are bent so you can get out of the way of any other tool that you're using. They do basically the same job as the scroll forks that I made in another video. This is another form of hinge tongs. Again, the curved jaw fits around the barrel of the hinge. And it doesn't have a box on the lower jaw, so it can be used on any size of stock. These are called hoop tongs and as you might have guessed they're made to carry hoops or large rings. Anything that needs to be held at 90 degrees to the handles. These tongs are designed to hold irregular shaped pieces of flat stock. And they're basically a one-sided box jaw tong. The hook on the one side keeps the piece from sliding out, so when you're hammering on the edge, you have to make sure that that hook is always facing up. This pair of tongs allows you to grab onto the center of a longer bar. Because the jaws are offset, the bar can simply pass right by your hand. Here I have a couple of variations of ring tongs, and ring tongs are just simply designed to hold a piece of round bar at 90 degrees to the handle. This is another form of ring tong. The two curved jaws allows you to hold on to different size rings. This pair of tongs was actually made to hold punches, but they're basically a ring tong. Here's another heavy form of ring tong. These short stubby jaws really provide a lot of clamping pressure, and this one was designed to be used specifically with this heavy punch. This is the pair of chisel tongs that I forged in another video and it's basically just designed to hold a whole range of chisels and punches. And these are a light duty pair of tongs and they're just made to hold a chisel to either protect your hands from a missed hammer blow or to get it away from the heat of a hot piece of metal. And finally we have my favorite pair of tongs which are the bolt tongs. I use this style of tong more than anything else. The bits can be shaped in a couple of different ways, but I always make them with a simple V-notch that you see here. That way I can use them on either round or square stock. The round bit tongs aren't as versatile because they can't be used with square stock. Probably the main reason I like bolt tongs over other shapes is that they're very versatile. The opening in the jaw allows you to work around some pretty complicated shapes. Also the bits wrap around most of the work so that really gives you a strong grip on the piece. So that's a basic tour of my tong rack. Hope it gives you some ideas on how you can improve your tong collection. And again, don't forget these are just the basic shapes. They're just 
ideas to start from. There, there's a lot of variations. Blacksmiths made their own tongs and it was quite common to just make a pair of tongs for a specific job. The old blacksmiths used to love taking you around and saying, I bet you can't guess what this was for. And, you know, it was for some obscure job that they did in 1932 or something, and they've never been used since. You know, you're blacksmiths. If you need a tool, go ahead and make it and design it. If it works, great. If it doesn't, well, modify it and try it again. Hi, I'm Dennis, and thanks for watching. If you like this video, by all means, give it a thumbs up. If you want to support this channel, you have a couple of options to do that. The first, of course, is to just subscribe. Secondly, if you have any suggestions or photographs of things you'd like to see on this channel, send them along and I'll do my best to turn them into a video. If you want to lend your financial support, you can do that in a couple of ways. First, if you're interested in making an ongoing contribution to this channel, just click the Patreon icon and it'll take you to my Patreon page and you can donate whatever amount you feel comfortable with. If you want to make a one-time contribution, just go to my channel homepage and click the donate button in the banner. So thank you for your support, and with your help, I'll be doing this for some time to come. I'll see you next time.